Well, the history of uh, web support started uh, as many of these companies do in a dorm room. And uh, it was a combination of, of great people coming together with a very simple idea that was timely and in a market that really needed it and some magic sauce maybe. Um, and just the effort of these people to, without any expectations of success, to just continue building something uh, and looking always towards the future and, uh, and, and moving one step after another. So it, I think it's very hard to, to reproduce uh, this kind of success. You can learn from you know, individual things that the company did, but it's very hard to reproduce. But I think the, the key was kind of the chemistry between the people, the, between the founders and the initial enthusiasm of the first employees. So for me, I think that's the most important thing. I think uh, initially, we, nobody would call it marketing. It was kind of who we were. Um, I think it was just explaining our positions on many topics that were not necessarily related to our business. And I think we, our whole uh, communication with our customers and with the general public, even today, is, you know, we can call it marketing, but it's, it's who we are. We, it's very hard to separate from web support. Uh, we like to have our opinion known. And if we feel very strongly about something, we talk about it. And it has, it has brought us success because our customers understand who we are and can feel themselves associated to us and, and they, they feel this connection and we feel it too. You know, we're, we appreciate when we are going through rough times, uh, they send us their support. Uh, so I think this has been a, an important factor in the growth of the company. Um, I think uh, finance was, was never a big issue. This business is a step-by-step -step business. It's hard to you know, grow too, too fast. I think the key constraint was was infrastructure and, and, and knowledge of how, because the way a company works when you have five employees and a couple of servers is very different from the way it works when you have 50 servers, 500 servers, 5,000 servers. And it's the same with people. When you scale the team up, uh, it's a very different beast. You know? And so both on the technology side, on the knowledge of the talent, uh, those were the biggest pains that we felt that you suddenly, some, suddenly you need a different type of person for this role and you need a different type of technology and the capital investment required in, in changing technology and making these big bets and sometimes we made the right choice, sometimes we made the wrong choice, but it's easier, easy to say that you know, after the battle, it's, it's much more difficult to see it ahead. So uh, when you're scaling in this kind of business, um, maybe it's good to get some outside knowledge uh, to learn, but even then, what works for some may not work for you. So, I think uh, our our founders were the ones that were kind of it was their culture. It was never like let's set up a culture and let's you know have bean bags and all that stuff. I think it was something that uh, was inherent to the people that founded the company and that were the initial team, and we are trying to maintain that culture and 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 build it because. Initially, you know, the average age of an employee here was very low and still quite, you know, young. But on the other hand, we have all matured professionally as well as, well as personally. Uh, and so we need to adjust the culture and we're working continuously on adjusting the culture to the current needs, not only of the customers, but also the employees. And we feel that there's, from time to time, you have these bigger shifts that require you to realign the company with what's going on in the outside world. And we're trying to work that into our culture. It's not, you know, massive changes. It's just, you know, trying to grow and mature. I think um, when you're growing fast, your, your attention span is pretty short. And what happens is that you focus really on the things that are growing really fast and you start ignoring other things. And uh, it means you can make a lot of mistakes. So, you know, what does productivity mean? It's, it's a bit, you know, it's a bit superficial term, but what, what happens is that when you're scaling, you focus on what is really important at that point and you ignore a lot of the other things. And uh, that causes a lot of issues uh, going forward and you lose productivity in that sense. We do have a specific process. We always uh, have ov obviously multiple rounds of interviews and all these things and we always say that we, we need every, uh, always at least three people to agree 
the three key people who are making the hire uh, the decision to agree on the hire uh, because we are, the culture is very important to us uh, but also career trajectory so uh, we are we don't have a problem hiring someone without a lot of experience where we see when, when we see that there's potential to develop this talent into something big long term and we have a very strong history of having people starting in entry positions and getting to the our COO has started when he was a student as a help desk agent and now he's the CEO of the company a very important uh, team member so we have a very, very good history of, of managing talent in this way so we f we try to find the right fit try to find the right entry point for the, for the particular person and then continuously develop it along a path that may not be clear initially but we see the potential i think historically there was some a small capital investment when we brought on uh, brought in another shareholder but it was more for maybe for for network for uh, you know for support from another group of people uh, but really, no, we never needed like big, a big capital investment. It wasn't something that we, uh, we looked at. Maybe going forward where we want to expand uh, beyond borders of Slack, where we are already active in a couple of countries, but if we want to expand in a bigger way, an acquisition of that type might require some sort of capital uh, investment or financing, uh, which is available to us already at this, si at this size, but you know, we need to make the right decision of which way you want to go. Uh, as I said, I think like specifically in our area, one thing is when you're scaling uh, to adjust the organization uh, from founder centric to more management and team centric, because once the responsibilities gr grow beyond a certain s scale, you need to start distributing and delegating more and, and giving people actual responsibility, whereas often founders have a fe feeling that they need to kind of control things tightly and it's very hard for them to let go. Uh, I'm very happy that our founder is not this way, but you still see it in the company. So I think help in this area is important. You need to find the right people and learn how to manage the organization in a way that you don't need to, as a CEO or as a leader, need to make all the decisions. You know, there's people who you trust, who you brought in or you, you developed to make those decisions for you because they will make better decisions than you will. I think that's for me something that's very important. On a very like technical level, um, you know, we are a very small country. Uh, we have limited experience with scaling, for example, IT infrastructure to global levels. I think this kind of expertise needs to be brought in from abroad, from experts or people who are abroad and learning. So help in this kind of area, you know, where the specific skill set is lacking. Um, uh, you know, if you can bring in a network that can generate these kind of people, that would be very interesting, obviously. Um, and then I think the thing that uh, we lack in Slack, and I might be wrong, is that, that we have very limited uh, sales experience. Salespeople is something that we don't have here, really. Um, and that's an area where definitely scales, scale ups can benefit from because you're selling something, uh, you know, initially through your website and through whatever channels you have, but beyond a certain level, you will need a sales team uh, for many products, and that's just not something that is really available here. So, yeah, for for us, uh, we are already let's just say a player on the market. We are known, and hence we are starting to hit certain boundaries in uh, in the legislation in the legislation space, in the, or the legislative space, and. We feel that it's very hard for us to have our voices heard without shouting like a 15-year-old girl and crying about it, uh, which is you know, what we often do if we have to. Uh, so we are lacking or we're missing channels to access government, to access public officials that would be open to understanding our issues and, uh, and helping with the legislation in, in a way that we can continue growing and you know, hiring more people and building an economy. So uh, that's definitely something that we want to look at. Mm -hmm.